Hey everyone. So here we have the Samsung 970 Evo Plus SSD. This drive actually just came out in the middle part of 2019. And uh, you guys may have uh, or may have not seen a review of the 970 Pro that I did uh, last year quite extensively too, a bunch of benchmarks. You definitely go check that video out. And this drive came out and one particular note about it is that it actually has faster write speeds and I think even a little bit of a faster read speed as well too. Um, pretty interesting numbers here. I actually look forward to benchmarking this. This is a 500 gigabyte model and one big plus for this is that even though SSD drives have been dropping, prices have been dropping, <laughs> um, the 970 Pro is still a little on the expensive side and I've definitely gotten a, a bunch of comments about that and have noticed that even though the price has dropped, still more expensive than other alternatives. But, you know, there is, I believe, a 10-year warranty attached to it, which is a big plus, and the drive definitely shows its numbers and really proves its performance, as I have uh, did a couple of videos on it in both Windows 7 and Windows 10. But here we have this one, and I believe this drive was actually picked up for just around $100, so definitely a pretty good cheaper alternative and um, possibly a little faster. Let's go ahead and just open this up and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, toss it into a computer and we'll see how uh, the numbers go. Not too much, probably going to be a little manual, a little plastic thing that's in that uh, funny enough it'll probably just fall out of. Um, well actually check it out, this time it has a little bit of a, oh no I'm sorry, take this off. There you go, a little close up there. Sorry if it's not focusing. Go ahead and try this again. There we go. And here comes the magic. Yep, still does it. So be really careful, obviously. You don't want to shock this thing now that winter is here. And a pretty nice cheap um, chip right here. And I'm definitely looking forward to tossing this in. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, toss this in, switch over to some uh, screen recorders and do a couple of benchmarks, um, install Windows, do a little fresh installation of Windows 10, and we'll see how that goes. In case anyone's curious what else is in here, let's just go ahead and open this underneath. And just basically a little manual, probably a bunch of different languages about we can uh, very likely probably just warranty information. Yep. Other legal, legal lease stuff. And uh, some numbers back there. Any issues? There's your phone number. Here's a drive going in. And I said this before, I really hope they come out with a slightly different alternative to uh, that little eatsy beatsy little screw and pushing this little stick of gum down at the same time. It's uh, just a little annoying, but whatever. The drive's installed. Just wanted to point out, by the way, this is the AMD uh, X570 uh, chipset running the Ryzen 3900X, not 3950, even though that CPU has just been released. So that'll definitely be a fun, uh, adventure to even get my hands on for starters. So this is the board and CPU I'm using here, uh, 32 gigs of RAM. This is the, what is this, the 2060 RTX, not the Super. And uh, this is uh, actually just to point out, this is the MSI X570 Ace Meg motherboard. Pretty uh, high uh, tier motherboard right here, though there is one that's even better and of course, more expensive. So I do have this in the main M2 slot um, in some couple of videos for the 970 uh, Pro. You, some people pointed out why I didn't actually put it in the main slot up here. That's actually controlled directly from the CPU. But so wanted to put it up there just in case you guys uh, wanted you guys to know. Let's go ahead and uh, get some Windows 10 installed on this. Uh, I don't need to bore you with that whole process, but I will do some benchmarks and also a boot test. 
So everything's installed, the Windows 10 is up and running. I have two little prompts here for you guys, Crystal Disk Mark and Adol Disk Benchmark as well too. You can also see the Evo drive over here, Evo Plus actually, working just fine. And I did actually install a late Samsung driver. You can see right over here, it's actually just from September. So not so bad. Um, definitely a different driver from another other videos I've actually done. So um, I have updated uh, the driver on my other computers that I've been doing um, using these drives on. Let's go ahead and get this started and I'll go ahead and chat away. Windows 10 installation actually was uh, pretty straightforward, um, pretty quick actually, using a USB thumb drive for installation and whatnot. And uh, actually I would say the, the entire installation was done pretty much in about five to six minutes, if not even less. And uh, the little process right after about getting everything ready for you as the, as the, the installation ends tells you, um, really didn't take much longer either to be honest. I did go ahead and apply a couple of uh, updates as well too. Uh, chipset drivers, uh, graphic drivers, even though it's not necessary here. Everything else is pretty much installed, so obviously there's nothing here missing. Uh, I don't have any secondary drive in, uh, plugged in here either. So right now it's just uh, the benchmark here that we're doing with uh, Crystal Mark. So, so far this drive actually seems pretty impressive. Uh, again, just to remind you, I do have it in the optimized slot on the X570 board that is directly uh, controlled by the CPU or accessed by the CPU, I, I've been told, by a number of people. And um, should definitely see the maximum performance available. Um, now, another thing to keep in mind, this drive is not PCIe Express um, Generation 4. So there is obviously a limitation to the speed. I'm really assuming that Samsung will be, <laughs> since a lot of manufacturers are doing it already, I think Corsair released some and uh, other brands as well too. Samsung's probably gonna hop on the bandwagon and start releasing uh, SSD drives that will take advantage of those speeds. And obviously I don't blame them, they should. Um, now that the X570 chipset is definitely quite popular and AMD's pumping out more CPUs. And uh, obviously the 3950X was just uh, released this week officially. And actually the new Threadripper as well too, which is, uh, those numbers actually look really good. Been really considering getting my hands on the Threadripper for some time now. And every time I really consider, <laughs> really consider getting it, um, what do you know, the, another generation of Threadripper gets released and I end up pushing back from the table and wait for the new release to come out. I'm actually here, just like you, waiting for the right numbers to appear. The 970 Pro, if you remember, was usually in like the mid 2500. And you can see here, it's almost pretty much matching the read speed just by a little bit. So pretty impressive numbers. Um, I can totally imagine what PCIe Gen 4 numbers give. Uh, I've actually seen drives surpass 5K, which is uh, 5K megabytes a second, which is absolutely astonishing. Um, many people out there will just say, I really don't know what on earth you could use all that speed for. That's probably true. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure Word may load up uh, a nanosecond faster. Some video game loading times will definitely increase a bit, but with such high numbers, exactly how much more can it be so that's definitely something to consider but um i mean unless you're going to be paying significantly more for those drives i mean they're definitely worth it if they're there available and at a good price so i'm pretty sure if samsung does release like a 990 pro who knows what that does take uh, advantage of gen 4 they're probably not going to be cheap as usual just go ahead and finish up this benchmark here and i'll do the next one Really impressive numbers, obviously. You can see the write speeds are actually even out number in the read in some cases. I believe if I hover over here as well too, you can actually see a couple of more numbers here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now obviously this benchmark is taking a little longer because I'm actually doing it on set on five cycles. So you can actually see it just taking a little longer in each one if I had set to one, this would have been done already a couple of minutes ago. Sorry about that, I skipped. Let's go ahead and click on each one. OK, 
give you guys those total numbers and we are finished with this so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the auto benchmark as well too leave that there and let's do hmm I'm having a little <laughs> little error here oh wrong disk there we go I do not want to benchmark my DVD drive. Benchmarking DVD drives. You know, many years ago, um, many years ago, obviously, as soon as I mentioned the word disk defragmentation, um, back in the early 90s when I was probably in high school, I remember um, actually yeah, early 90s, I'd say. Junior high, late on Mount Tree, I don't remember. Uh, my dad gave me one or two little floppy disks, and I had a couple of uh, goofy little um, documents saved on it. And uh, my dad taught me about, you know, the disk fragmentation and uh, how it works, you know, the platters and everything, you know, slowing stuff down, etc., etc. Um, I actually was defragmenting my floppy disk drives in Windows 95. <laughs> So this is actually, yeah, so mid-90s. It was probably in junior high, high school and whatnot. And uh, i got to tell you, <laughs> now that I look back on that, that was actually pretty pretty funny, uh, frag uh, <laughs> defragging uh, a floppy disk drive. So I'm thinking it would actually really make a huge difference or pff, even just a half a second, who knows. This defragging obviously was always on my mind back in early 2000s, mid 2000s, when um, physical disk drives were, mechanical disk drives were still the thing. And you may, may, believe it or not, SSDs did exist to some degree, but they were overly expensive and just not practical for everyday use. But they did exist. Um, you thought they were expensive when they were first released. Well, they definitely were expensive back then, but n not just expensive, slow. Um, I'm sure access um, access to files and whatnot were pretty quick, but the speeds like we're seeing now were just pretty much on par with uh, this back then. So not much of a benefit. It wasn't until the late 2000, like uh, 2010 or so, that SSDs were starting to become really a little more popular. And I eventually got my hands on some as well, too, and started using it as my main boot device on my first and second computer. And that's when I absolutely fell in love with those speeds. Just seeing it boot up was already a game changer. Anyway, um, blabbering on and on about <laughs> floppy disks and SSDs. Now we got little um, stick of gum size uh, SSDs that go directly on the board and uh, even access directly by the CPU. These numbers are actually looking pretty good as well, too. Um, I will put a link down there. You can actually see benchmark um, for the 970 Pro. You can go ahead and compare them if you'd like. But uh, these numbers actually look pretty impressive. And I'll uh, finish this off and do a little boot test. And uh, hopefully you find, guys found this video uh, useful. Definitely uh, shoot any comments you want, whatnot. Let me know what you think. Uh, any thoughts on this particular drive and uh, slightly cheaper alternative like I said before to the 970 Pro I'm actually thinking about using this drive on uh, to upgrade family members computers from the old SSDs um, to actually a pretty decently sized SSD drive and um, Windows 10 I'm sure sure takes advantage of it just a little bit better uh, to some degree so here you go some numbers here as well too put them side by side and you can also see here, I don't really have anything on it. Still a basic installation, so pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and do that boot test. All right, so let me go ahead and do that boot test. Um, that's pretty much where I left off here. Sorry I can't continue using the screen recorder, but it doesn't really work too well when I'm turning the computer off and on unless I got a capture card somewhere else, which I currently don't. So. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna actually gonna leave all these perms open and uh, just hit restart. Actually, no, shut down, sorry. Eh. I don't know if those perms will open automatically as soon as boot up comes up. So, computer's off 
and let me unplug this. I am going to turn it on right now. Hear those fans whirling a little bit and those DV drives waking up. And a car outside my window. So we got post. There we go. I will also note that the motherboard on the X570 board I have here actually did take a little bit longer to post than normal. And the recent BIOS update actually changed it, sped it up a little bit. Uh, MSI actually has that BIOS update on their site. So actually the posting time actually was taking a little bit longer when I first got, had this board in CPU. Now it's obviously a bit faster. Definitely has made a difference. So boot time, very impressive. Um, let's just do a reboot because I'm sure some people notice that the shutdown process is basically almost like a, a sleep or hibernate mode uh, in the sky. So if you're doing the restart, you can actually really see the true boot time to some degree. But if anyone, you know, you may or may not agree with me, let's do it anyway. Still pretty impressive, under 10 seconds if uh, you time it directly from after the post occurs. Totally up to you how you decide to judge that. And definitely let me sh let me know how you feel, uh, what you think about this drive, if you've actually owned it. I'd definitely like to hear your comments because like I said, I'll probably be using this drive for a couple of families' computers, including future computers of mine as well too. Uh, I do, <clears throat> excuse me, I do actually own two 970 Samsung 970 Pros currently running on this PC, actually. Um, I did take the drive out. You can actually see it right there. It's upside down. Sorry if it's not focusing, but... And uh, I removed it so we can give this a shot. And the numbers, again, don't lie. Very impressive drive, so... Hope you enjoyed this, found it useful. Shoot a like, subscribe if you like. I'll definitely be posting some more videos. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry I was on a little hiatus there for a moment. I just had some couple of videos to work on, and for some reason I just never really got to uploading them. So you'll probably see a big influx of videos coming in, so I look forward to it. All right? Let me know what you think. Take care.